We're doing the June 07 exam. We've up to page 10. Question 55, 56, and 57 all pertain to this projectile. Projectile is launched into the air with initial speed of V at an angle of 30 degrees. How about the horizontal? The projectile lands on the ground two seconds later. There's a lot of information given here concerning projectiles. We have some initial velocity V, 30 degrees, and it's going to be in the air for a time of two seconds. Well, if it's going to be in the air for two seconds, part of its trip will be going up and part of its trip will be going down. That whole time it will have a velocity in the x-axis a horizontal component which will carry it forward. So uh, if it's going to be in the air for two seconds, that means it's going to go up for one second. The time up will be equal to one second. So the ball will go up for one second. We know that uh, the velocity changes. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second, that means for every second an object is under the influence of gravity, its velocity changes by 9.8 meters per second. So it's reasonable to assume that if this ball goes up for one second and its velocity changes 9.8 meters per second per second, that its initial velocity in the upwards direction would be 9.8 meters per second. Okay. For uh, and with that, we could actually find the horizontal velocity. We could say that the uh, right triangle that is velocity in the x-axis and velocity in the y-axis, which is represented by the actual velocity, we could build a right triangle in which velocity y is the opposite side, 30 degrees is the angle, and velocity x is the adjacent. We know, let's see, uh, the tangent of an angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. And so the adjacent side would be equal to the opposite divided by the tangent of the angle. So we could say that the adjacent side, or the velocity in the x-axis, is equal to the velocity in the y-axis divided by the tangent of 30 degrees. So we, could, we know everything about this thing. The velocity in the x-axis would be equal to, get the calculator out, and I come up with a velocity of about 17 meters per second. I could tell you how far the thing travels. The range will be equal to the velocity in the x-axis times the time in the air. So 17 meters per second times 2 seconds is going to give you, let's say, about uh, 34 meters. It's going to go 34 meters, all sorts of things we know about this. All right, so we feel pretty comfortable about things launched at an angle. Let's go see what they want to know. On the diagram in your answer booklet, sketch the ideal path for the projectile. Well, that's got to be pretty easy. That's without air friction, so it's going to travel in a parabolic arc going to go up for a while and come down for a while. So the first question is pretty easy. Question 56. How does the maximum altitude of the projectile change as the launch angle is increased from 30 to 45? Right. So, so the maximum altitude, how high in the air? Well, in our first situation, we uh, were launching and part of its velocity was going up. Velocity in the y-axis, which was a function of the angle. As this angle increases, the velocity in the y-axis will also increase. And if velocity in the y-axis increases, then it goes higher in the air. So I would say it increases. I, I, I'll put a period at the end of it. So that's a complete sentence, but uh, uh, the altitude will increase as the angle goes from uh, 30 to 45. As a matter of fact, the angle will, or as the angle continues to reach 90, the altitude will increase until finally we just launch the thing straight up in the air and it goes as high as possible. 
And so 90 degrees would be the maximum height angle. And question 57 is also essentially a concept question. How does the total horizontal distance traveled by the projectile change as the launch angle is increased from 30 to 45? Well, this is, again, you need to remember this one. Maximum range. The range is a total distance of all travels, so projectile travels. Maximum range is at 45 degrees. If I'm less than 45 degrees, then it just doesn't go as far. Imagine if I was shooting at zero degrees. The thing would just skirt along the ground and not actually travel through the air at all. Likewise, if I was beyond 45 degrees, I start shooting at higher and higher, and it goes higher, but it doesn't go as far until finally you're launching it straight up at 90 degrees, and it goes as high as it possibly can, but it goes no range at all. So the maximum range is 45 degrees. So let's read the question again. How does the total horizontal distance traveled by the projectile change as the launch angle is increased from 30 to 45? Well, that would also increase. The range will increase as you go from 30 degrees to 45 degrees. I guess that's a complete sentence too. Don't forget a period at the end. That sometimes ends up being important.